We got several folks that are graduating this year. I think one of the greatest things you have when you graduate is looking forward to, yeah, school's done, but now life really opens up in a big way, doesn't it? This year, what's my next step? What's the next thing in life that I have to do? So I want to encourage our graduates in that way, as well as take some time to recognize them this, at this time. So uh, you say, well, who's graduating amongst us? And so we've got their names there listed there in our bulletin. Ashley Merrick, she's here today. Over there on the left hand side. Tori Shankler, she's also right back there. Kane Reddick, I know, I'm not sure if he's here today, but um, he's in the youth group, comes up on his nights. Uh, Aurora Adamson, that is Dixie Dennis's granddaughter. She's not here right now. And then we also have some overachievers that are here. That's Haley Massey, right there in the back. She's Jennifer Johnson, she's counting the I saw her, she's counting, she's counting right. She's graduating right now. <laughs> and then Chris Jones, who's also graduating from the So I want to take some time to recognize her that way. Thomas. Graduates, would you come forward for a few minutes so we can stare at you awkwardly? <laughs> no, really, so that we can see who you are and take this moment to uh, celebrate you. Uh, that is our privilege as church family is to celebrate and rejoice in one another's joys, uh, as well as to bear in one another's burdens and sorrows. And I dare say that we probably have a mix of both of those here this morning. But at this moment, we're going to focus on those joys, your joys of accomplishment and celebrating that with you. Or perhaps it's uh, more of your exhaustion that you're feeling at this moment. <clears throat> but you have arrived at this moment of life. You have accomplished an achievement. So we want to celebrate that with you. We want to take a moment to encourage you. And we want to give you a gift uh, to remind you of our support of your accomplishment, but more so of your future. Because that's really what graduation is about. As I'm sure you're well aware, graduation is not the end. It's not the accomplishment of what is finished so much as it is the doorway into the direction and the purposes that God has planned for your life. That that training and education has prepared you to step into and that God has uniquely gifted you to fulfill. And so that is the future that you are moving forward into. Uh, so we want to encourage you in that future. Uh, so it's not simply to gather this morning and to say, congratulations, you've made it, now go die in peace. But rather to go forth and conquer the future that God has laid before you. And so at this moment of life, uh, reminds me very distinctly of where Joshua's journey begins in the book of Joshua. It's of course not the beginning of his journey, it's rather the, the middle but at the beginning of Joshua, he is at a moment of transition that's very similar to yours. The Israelites have come out of slavery in Egypt, they've been delivered, they've crossed the desert, they've wandered in the desert, and now they've reached the moment where God speaks to them and he says, it's time to go in and possess the land of promise that I have brought you to. And it is at this moment that God also instructs them that Moses is no longer going to be leading. Rather, it is time for Moses to go and to die on the mountain and pass off leadership to Joshua. And so Joshua is now no longer the mentee. He's no longer the assistant. Now he gets to be the head honcho. It's time for him to step out from under Moses' cloak of leadership into his own role, into his own positions and future. And so that's largely where you find yourself. You're no longer at the point of preparation. You're moving out of the education and development into the future that you're pursuing. And that God prepared for you. And so the words that God speaks to Joshua, I think, are perhaps the best ones that I could give you today. And so it's at this, this moment of Joshua moving from a desert of preparation into the pursuit of future promises. That God comes and he speaks these words to him. This is Joshua chapter 1 and beginning in verse 5. He says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous, 
For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may have good success wherever you go. And this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so the instruction that God gives to Joshua and to you is two things, to be strong and to be courageous. Now the interesting thing in the first command is that God says to be strong. Well, one does not just be strong. If that was the case, I think we'd all be a lot more buff. <clears throat> but as you see, I don't have a six-pack and giant bulging biceps, so you don't just be strong. You grow strong. You develop strength. You have to put in the exercise and the discipline and work out that strength. That's much of what Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, as he says, bodily exercise profits much, but godliness profits eternally. But here God doesn't say to Joshua, grow strong. He doesn't say, get stronger. He doesn't say, develop strength. He says, be strong. Well, how does one be strong? The answer to that comes into the background of what God is commanding them to do. As he's commanding them to go in and possess the land of Canaan, the instructions that God has given them, back in Deuteronomy chapter 7 specifically, is that as they go forward and as they walk in the instructions of the law that he's given through Moses, that his promise is, I will go before you. I will go and I will drive these nations out. I will give you victory. I will be like a hornet that sends these guys running out ahead of you. And so be strong is not so much what Joshua needs to do or be or the abilities that he is to exercise or even to develop. Rather, it is his dependence upon God to do as he has promised. It is much the picture of a small child who can come and face the biggest, baddest bully, not because he can take that bully on, but because right beside him is his dad and he is one big dude. And so his strength is not in the child's ability to defend himself, but rather his proximity to the one who loves him, cares for him, and will protect him. And so you too, as Joshua did, will find your strength, not necessarily in your own abilities, but in your proximity to your father and to his strength. And so he tells us to be strong, but he also says be courageous. Now being courageous is where this strength steps into action, because courage is not necessarily the absence of fear. As you move forward into the next steps of life and the future ahead of you, if you haven't already, you'll doubtless find that there are many times where you go, ooh, there was no classes on this one. Man, I really could have used a textbook on how to do World Pandemic 101. And you'll find that even the best education does not have all the preparations for life. And your education, your abilities, your preparations, your experience doesn't give you everything you need. There's some uncertainty, there's some fear, there's some unknown. Joshua certainly faces this. Joshua's mark of leadership is primarily to be a general to take these people and lead them in warfare to the conquest of this land of promise. But guess what? Joshua's history, his preparation is a slave in Egypt. And unless you're stupid, you do not train slaves to fight and then arm them with weaponry. That's not going to end well. So Joshua has little to no experience whatsoever in how to lead armies. Yes, that's what God's called him to do. At this moment when he takes over the role of leadership and this primary purpose and job, he's fought all of three battles. Well, now you're the general. How confident would we be if we had a general put in that position who's fought all of three battles? Hmm, that's a little scary. 
But I'm sure Joshua was the most terrified of all. Joshua is uncertain of how this goes. Joshua is uncertain of how to lead an army, how to conduct warfare. And yet, God's instruction to him is be courageous. Courageous courage, it, it is the stepping out, not in the absence of fear or uncertainty, but rather the willingness to step forward because you are certain of the future that God has promised. It is the willingness to go and to do what God has called and commanded because I am sure of who I follow, not necessarily the path that I walk. And so Joshua is being called to remember what God has brought them through and the promises that he's made. And then because of that, because of his confidence in God, not in himself, not in his abilities, not in his knowledge of the path ahead of him, but the knowledge of his God, to be courageous and to go forth and do what God has commanded. And that's where the third command here comes in. The third command God gives Joshua is really complementary, not its own entity. Here he is instructing him to be careful to do all the law that Moses has commanded him, to not turn from the right or the left of it, to meditate on it, to not let it depart from his mouth. Why? Because this word is the reminder of who that God is, the reminder of what he's already done, what he's already brought you through, and far more so of the future that he has certainly promised you so that you are able to be strong, to draw close and depend on that strength, and to move out in courage, no matter what comes. And so it's with that in mind that I have two gifts for you today. One is some curiously strong altoids to remind you to always be strong, not in your own strength, but in the strength of the one who you are close to. And also a book here that is a collection of God's promises from the Bible. And these promises are to remind you of the future, of the hope that God has put before you, and of the God who it is that you follow and serve. And so as you take this gift and as you step forward into the rest of your life, our encouragement and our desire and our prayer for you is that you would always remember your strength will wane as you step away from God. And your courage will fail as you forget His promises. But as you draw near to Him, and as you walk in the instructions and the hope that He has given you in Jesus Christ, you will always find the ability to be strong and courageous and conquer whatever life may put before you. So, I'm going to pray over you, and I'm going to present you with a gift. And we say to you, congratulations. Would you pray with me? God, we do indeed celebrate the lives that are here before us, as well as the students who are not able to join us this morning. God, we thank you that you have brought them through this accomplishment, through this stage of life, and yet we do rejoice because this is a beginning. And we pray that as you lead them in the future that you have set before them, that you would use them mighty and powerfully to demonstrate your greatness, your goodness, to carry out your truth and your plan, and to bring the hope of Christ into this world. God, would you prosper what they do. And as they will face challenges, difficulties, will you strengthen them continually? And as they find themselves weak, inadequate, and unprepared, would they be filled with the strength of Jesus and the courage of one who knows the future that they are pursuing? And so, God, bless them, lead them, and walk with them every moment, showing what it means to be strong and courageous in Jesus Christ. To his praise and glory, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.